Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Using ShowScript 3 and Making Achievements panel here for the 2024 MC Parks Expo. I'm Ryan, I'm your host, and I am the author of both uh, ShowScript and Achievables, uh, including Big Al, which is what we call the language that we actually write the achievements themselves in. So I'm really, really excited because both Achievables and ShowScript both kind of encapsulate really cool modular things um, that allow us to kind of create a lot more content for you a lot more quickly, have a lot of um, have a lot of our cast members get involved in things that they haven't done in the past. Uh, and what's even cooler is they are both open source. And so there are ways for you folks to get involved, see how they work, uh, contribute new features to them, um, and kind of learn how to use some of our tools uh, before applying to MC Parks and joining our team. Um, so show scripts are really, really cool right now because you actually have the ability to, with just a GitHub account, um, pop right into immediately, uh, to immediately playing around with this without needing to know how to start a Minecraft server. Um, achievements, we're going to, we're going to demo creating some achievements for you, um, today, but, uh, the system for you all to write stuff isn't quite ready yet. Um, so it's mostly going to be a, see what's possible with this. Isn't it really cool? And, uh, and less so, um, less so, uh, a practical guide of how you can get started right now. Um, so knowing that I've put a poll in discord. And there's 32 people in the audience right now, and only 18 of them have voted. So everyone else who's in here, I need you to go and vote for either writing achievements or using ShowScript 3. Um, for using ShowScript for writing achievements, we're just gonna I'm gonna show you the language, how it works, um, and we will together uh, come up with some fun little achievements and play around with them on my test server. Uh, for using ShowScript 3, I'm gonna give you a little tour of the ShowScript 3 language. Um, I'm going to uh, show you how you can start a Minecraft server running it, and uh, we will maybe take a look at some shows that our MC Parks cast members create. Maybe? I'm going to have to... Yeah. Yeah, that could be fun. Uh, all right. It looks like uh, ShowScript 3 has taken a commanding lead after I told everybody else to vote. Uh, so I think we're going to go and, and do that one first. So ShowScript. Let's talk ShowScript. Uh, show script's really really neat it is um, a spigot plugin that you can run on a minecraft server and also this pretty rich um, domain specific language it's a groovy dsl um, dsls are really cool uh, because you can essentially uh, take a programming language that exists and has a bunch of syntax already built in and everything and extend it to your needs on mc parks a big need that we have is um, needing to run commands in Minecraft at specified time codes. Um, so what that means is, you know, you've all seen Happily Ever After, you've all ridden rides, you'll notice that there are a lot of effects that happen that are tied to audio cues or tied to certain timestamps in things that happen, and ShowScript is what we use to, um, to, to schedule all those commands running. Now for a really long time, um, MC Parks wishes behind the scenes. Uh, way before we had show script, this is what uh, our shows looked like. Um, it was, oh, come on, Brian, show me the big room. Uh, they looked like this. They looked like a big mess of command blocks. Wow, he's really focused on that. There you go. Um, we have this big, um, look, we had achievements on MC Parks years and years ago, taking inventory. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, we had these big rooms like this, and we put command blocks and redstone repeaters that timed out every half second, um, and that's how we timed our shows, and we just put commands in each of those command blocks. Um, I'm sure you can see all of the issues with this approach, um, and you know why this maybe isn't the best way to do things. And so from there, um, creative's reopening soon. Some things never change. Um, uh, you know, we moved from this system to writing down things in text files, and uh, that format has evolved many times over the years uh, to turn into ShowScript 3. So, 
how can you get started using ShowScript 3? Um, and what does the language look like? Uh, first, let's take a look at the language. So in its very, very basic form, you have a bunch of time codes in your show. And time codes specify when in the show the code in there should execute. So um, there are 20 ticks in a second on a Minecraft server. And so if I say ticks 20, that means one second into the show. Now, sometimes it makes sense to deal in ticks. Sometimes it makes sense to deal in regular human readable seconds. And so we also provide uh, the ability to say how many seconds into a show you would like to happen, including fractional seconds. Uh, now, in that, in those time code blocks, you run commands mostly. Um, and so you can run any command from any plugin um, that you have installed on a Minecraft server. On MC Parks, a lot of our effects use uh, custom commands from custom plugins that we've written. Those aren't included in ShowScript. ShowScript is just like the scheduling technology. Uh, it allows you to schedule things to run. Um, but uh, you aren't limited to just commands. You can also just write arbitrary code if you know your way around Minecraft APIs, but that's a very advanced topic and probably something we won't touch on too much today. Um, something that you also might want to do is uh, display text. Now, of course, you could use the vanilla Minecraft tell raw command to, 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 to say text to uh, different players. But something that's common for us to do is, you know, we, we really want to just send a certain kind of text between, um, you know, between a radius of certain coordinates. And so we wrote a special action just to do that, just because of how common it is for our use case. Um, and so, yes, you can just use a tell raw command, um, but you can also just put it in, um, put it in, a, in a text block as well. And sometimes you want to call other shows. I think a big part of what makes uh, show script powerful is, you know, the modularity of it. You can write a bunch of shows and you can call them from each other. Now, on MC Parks, we have lots of um, we have lots of people working on things, and it's very important that everybody is able to read the show files that you've written um, so we know what's going on and if, so, if an issue happens. Like, for example, yesterday, the moving walkway broke in, um, in the expo hall about an hour before we, we started the keynote, and I wanted to get it working so you folks could see the really, really cool effect. Um, but King Shepard wasn't around, and he's the one who wrote it. But King commented his code. He wrote comments next to all of the things saying what was going on. And because of that, I was able to see everything that was happening. I was able to follow everything that he had written. And I was able to um, add the necessary checks to make sure that, um, that it wasn't throwing any errors anymore. So that's the basic thing. I want to show you how it works now. And to do that, I'm going to show you something that any of you can do to um, uh, to uh, to start ShowScript yourself. Um, so here's what you do. You have to have a GitHub account. So sign up for a GitHub account if you don't have one already. Um, and if you're a student, um, well, let me let me tell you. Let me let me tell you what we're going to do first. Uh, but we're going to open something called a code space. So if I click on code, there's this code spaces thing right here. Um, and uh, Darren and Josh, I'm not following chat, so if any questions happen to pop up in there, just like, you know, yeah, yeah. let me we'll know. Um, but you can create a new code space. And so if I do that, essentially what's happening is a virtual machine is being created for me in the cloud that is going to start a Minecraft server. It's going to build the show script plugin. It's going to add the show script plugin to a Minecraft server. And then it's going to give us an IP address for us to connect to our Minecraft server and start playing around with uh, with shows. Um, so it's, this is going to take about three to five minutes, I think. Um, so I'll mention that uh, you get 60 free hours of code spaces every month just for having a GitHub account. Uh, but if you want more, if you're a student, and I believe many of you are students, uh, you can go to education.github.com. And uh, you can join GitHub, GitHub Education, and you can apply. Uh, you can you can you can verify yourself as an actual student with your student ID, and then you get, I believe, 120 free hours of code spaces. Um, a shameless plug: I, I, my day job is working on the GitHub Education team, uh, so you know. Uh, so go and and do that if you want more time. Um, and this essentially allows you to not have to know anything about starting Minecraft servers. Um, you don't need to. Um, 
you don't need to you know have to worry about uh, any of that if you want to just play around with uh, with show script. Um, so everything's starting up, which is awesome. And I believe once everything is super super activated, okay. So we see our we see our readme here that we were looking at before. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Now I believe. If I click on this, no. If I click on, I think it's supposed to automatically open. So maybe it doesn't work. Uh, let's see. Oh, here, here we go. It's happening. It's all happening. Okay, okay. It's just, it's just taking a minute. So uh, down here, all our, our Minecraft server is actually going to start up. Uh, so here we go. Okay, so now the Minecraft server is starting right here. Um, by default, it's, it's running Minecraft 1.12.2, since that's what we do here on MC Parks. Um, and uh, if I go into... Let's see, where is it? If I go into sandbox data, this is where my Minecraft server lives, and my shows are going to live in plugins. Uh, it hasn't actually finished yet, it seems. So let's uh, let's 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 give it a minute to do to do its thing. I should have started doing this uh, when I started talking, of course, but you know. No, I think not... this is a good demo so people know how to start one. It's true. It's true. Uh, but I wish I had content to uh, to fill everything out. Okay, so the Minecraft server is now starting, which is fantastic. And um, so we're we're letting we're letting that all kind of spin up. And I believe also. Trying to look because the the plugins should show up in this plugins directory and they haven't yet, and the Minecraft server is starting, which is uh, not ideal. So I'm gonna have to stop the Minecraft server and restart it. Uh, we do have a question right here. Um, does uh, show script only run in 1.12.2? Uh, yes. Um, right now I've only tested it to run in 1.12.2. It might just work in newer versions. I have no idea. Um, so uh, we, of course, I'm welcoming contributions to the to the to the repository. Um, so if anyone wants to do any of the do any of the work to um, to have it um, work properly on uh, on more recent versions, you are more than welcome to. And then PR it up. Um, that's a great time to mention that these are so these are licensed using um, uh, uh, AGPL. Uh, so what that means is you must make available the complete source code of any derived works that you make based on this. Um, so if you make any changes to sh the show script um, plugin, uh, you are legally obligated to uh, to pull request them up or at least make the source code uh, publicly available. Um, all right. It looks like our, pl our Minecraft server has started. Our plugins are in here. Um, I'm going to run PL because there's no plugins running because the Minecraft server started too early. So what I'm going to do is run stop. It's going to stop the Minecraft server. And then I'm going to run slash start again. And that's going to restart the server with our plugins on it. Um, now, we need to get a public IP address to connect to for this Minecraft server. And so I'm going to click on public IP right here. Um, and it's actually been asking us to connect to this thing for a while. I'm just going to say yes. Uh, when we do that, we have this. This is my IP address, everything after the TCP. So if I go to rnmdo dash that, uh, well, maybe I shouldn't have shown this because uh, now everybody can connect to my server once it, uh, once, it, once it starts up. But that's fine. We're all right. Um, What's its capacity? Can it handle 41 people? Uh, what was that? Sorry, you were cutting out. Can it handle 41 people? Because that's how many people are uh, here. Almost certainly no. I should whitelist it. Uh, when it comes <laughs> out. Uh, whitelist. Whitelist on. Yeah, whitelist add Ryan Hecht. Okay. 
I'm on the whitelist. Uh, okay. Logins, show script, shows. Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, okay, so we've now started show scripts, uh, which is fantastic. I can uh, go here. I can go... Uh, oh, that's my dev server. We don't actually want to go there. Hold on, that's the wrong place. Uh, we can go here. Um, I pasted that link in that I got, and look at that. I'm on a Minecraft server just from typing one button uh, or pressing one button on github.com, which is super neat. And if I do slash PL, you can see that the uh, show script, world edit, and world guard are all loaded on this server. Um, so you might be asking why world guard? Uh, well, world guard enables something really cool called region shows, but um, let's, let's, let's just make a regular old show first. So in our, in our sandbox data directory, this is our server's main directory, all the files that have to do with running our Minecraft server all live in here. Um, and if we go into plugins, show script, and then the shows directory, um, this is uh, where this is where um, all of our shows will live. So I can create a new file, and we can call it test dot groovy, and this is going to be where we put in our uh, all of uh, this information that we have before. Um, Oh, look at that. It looks like uh, Tech with Andrew has started it up on 1.20.6, and it looks like it works fine. Uh, so that's cool and good to know. Um, and as you can see, Broken TV attempted to log into my Minecraft server. Uh, you know. Broken... Bro <laughs> Broken took this <laughs> big mess, <laughs> took a screenshot of it, and typed it in by hand. Of Hello, all the Broken people TV. to have done that, Broken is the least surprising. Is that my internet or Josh's internet that's uh, causing I think it yours. choppy? And, okay, I think it's me, because Darren also sounded choppy. I, maybe my computer doesn't like the fact that I'm... Well, you are streaming. I, I'm streaming multiple ways. I'm recording. I'm also streaming. Uh, you know, cool. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of how all this works. So let's, let's, let's make uh, this test show right here. Uh, so let's go ahead and just copy it. Um, or maybe even better, let's just do tix zero, and then let's do uh, command, uh, and then let's do uh, say hello world. Uh, and then in our game, let's do show start test. Uh, I don't have permission because I have to op myself. Let me do that real quick. Uh, op Brian Hex. Okay, so now that I'm op and I do show start test, yay! Look at that. We did it. Hello world. We've written Hello World in, in show script. Um, that's Hello World. And you can do whatever you want. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have opt myself in the show and then run it in console. Uh, that would have been a cool that would have been a cool thing to uh, to see as well. Um, so that's the very, very most basic show that you could possibly have. Um, let's look at something a little cooler. We can go and take that um, we can go and take that example from uh, from here. Now, these coordinates don't make any sense, uh, or maybe they do. Let's go see if these coordinates, negative 221, uh, 70, 6, 89. Just so you know, we can't see. Oh, I don't have uh, essentials installed here. Yeah, your, your Minecraft isn't part of the share screen. It's not? Um, oh, no. it should be. Isn't it? Is it now? No. I've been going there a few times. Um, hold on. Windowed projector. Oh, hold on. That's it. Okay. Um, we're going to share this screen. Sorry, guys. It's been recording to. Uh, <laughs> it's been recording properly. So, okay. Hold on. So now we're in game. <laughs> Yes, now you see it? Yes, everyone on okay. YouTube is going to just know, but... Um. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's teleport Ryan. Okay, cool. So uh, this, this, these coordinates do exist in this world, uh, which is great. So let's go to here again. So what is this show doing? On tick zero, it's going to broadcast Hello World. Two seconds in, it's going to say this will run two seconds after the show starts. Does broadcast exist in... No, it doesn't. Why isn't Essentials loaded? It's right here. Uh, let's see. 
because uh, it looks like essentials.jar is an empty file. That, that, that'll do it. Um, let's fix that real quick. Uh, so I'm going to stop the server. Uh, I'm going to delete essentialsx.jar. Uh, and I believe if we go into, uh, oh, why is, okay. Um, oh, I didn't actually stop the server. That's embarrassing. Uh, Broke is still trying to log into my Minecraft server, guys. Uh, let us. It'll work eventually. Roll four two nine nine. There we I go. think we should uh, ban him from MC Parks for that too. I can't hear anything you guys are saying, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing we're not saying anything important. <laughs> you know, I know that you're talking. I don't know what you're saying. Um, all right, let's take essentials real quick, just because I want to be able to have a broadcast. Uh, and actually, it's a good it's a good thing to show you folks um, some of uh, another another script that I've written to make the code space a little cooler. Um, so if I ls uh, sand, let's see, where the hell am I? Josh, how's your day going? Oh, it's great. Uh, <laughs> I, I know that you're saying something. <laughs> Uh, okay, so if we do ls uh, sandbox scripts um, download plugins, let me do that real quick. Uh, permission denied. Okay, well, okay, here we go. So now we've downloaded essentials again. Oh, it's because uh, it looks like it looks like essentials CDN is down. Yep, essential CDN is down. So let's copy. Oh no, it's not the. Okay, whatever. Uh, I have to update my script. So let's do. What... This is so much fun. I said it's going to be easy for anyone who doesn't know how to run a Minecraft server. Now I'm in here editing script files. Uh, so what I've done is okay. Anyone can do this. So in here, if you go into uh, sandbox uh, scripts, there's a uh, file right here called plugins.csv. And I have uh, plugins, so the name of a plugin I want to download, and then a link on where to download it. Uh, and so you can run that. Okay, so now if I run, um, okay, well, it already exists, so let's go and delete the old one that's empty. Let's delete it. Let's run that again. Okay, now it's downloading essentials. Now we have essentials. Now we can do uh, slash start to start our Minecraft server again. Okay, so the Minecraft server is gonna gonna restart now. Um, uh, okay, so I saw a few questions in chat. Um, is is that the plugin used uh, for spotlight commands and lasers? Show script? Uh, no. So show script allows you to run commands at arbitrary times. The actual commands that you run in here have to come from other plugins um, and um, uh, in the case of MC Parks, we use um, we have a custom um, now fix TV is trying to log into my Minecraft server. Yikes! Um, <laughs> we have a custom plugin that uh, that that controls a lot of those commands. So spotlights, lasers, animating armor stands. We do a lot of that stuff in house. Um, so you'd have to find a different plugin to make a lot of those effects um, possible yourself. Um, Okay, so my Minecraft server is back online. And so I'm back here now. Uh, so let's go and look at what this does. So now I can do broadcast. Broadcast, hi. Yeah, okay, sweet. Um, broadcast is an essentials command. That's why I had to download the essentials plugin. And that's a great example of using commands from other plugins to do stuff. Um, so two seconds in, um, these two will run. And then another cool trick about ShowScript is the fact that um, it's a real programming language. Uh, so it, you know, it's based on Groovy. So we can um, do things like define a variable. So I'm defining a variable for the blue fairies prefix in chat um, because the, the blue fairies gonna have a lot of lines in my show. And so I wanna make sure that it's nice and easy to, um, uh, I don't have to write this out every single time the blue fairy speaks. So we have blue fairy prefix. And then we have text for um, the blue fairies say, when stars are born, they possess a gift or two. And then it looks like a fireworks ro rocket goes off. Um, now, also, this is going to be very late into the show. So let's just change it to be uh, seconds five. Um, 
Let's do this. Let's do... Yeah, let's do... Let's do seconds... Five. Let's do seconds... Seven. And let's do seconds. And when she says they possess a gift or two, the fireworks rocket will go. And this is just the vanilla Minecraft firework uh, spawn command right here. So for effect, let's make it nighttime. Sweet. And now let's do show start test. Hello world. This will run two seconds after. And when stars are born, they possess a gift or two. And then there's a fireworks rocket. Um, and now you can see how you could make something like wishes uh, based on just having that. Um, and essentially, that's what wishes is, is a bunch of text commands and fireworks commands. Eh, the newer wishes has some new neat castle projections and things. Um, but you could, you could pretty much just um, go online and find a, a Minecraft uh, firework uh, summon command generator. Um, to, to, to make all of your fireworks, and you can kind of just schedule them all in a show script file like this um, to do uh, a bunch of neat stuff like that. Uh, now, there's more powerful things you can do in show script as well. If we go back to our README here, um, let's go to the Groovy DSL so we can kind of see some of the other cool concepts that you can, that you can do in here. Um, why not just uh, put fireworks in a dispenser? Uh, because in order to have that, those fireworks um, go off at the right time, um, you would have to rig up a big redstone contraption uh, to do that, right? Um, and so, you know, you'd have, to, you'd have to rig up, you'd have to essentially do one of these um, <laughs> to, 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 to rig it all up and make it uh, run at the, uh, at the right time. Um, and so instead, you, it's better to have all of that in, um, in a text file, because from the text file, everything that you need to run the show is in here. Like, this doesn't depend on anything existing in the Minecraft world, right? So I don't need to worry about, um, you know, how many fireworks are left in the dispenser? Where is the dispenser? Did someone uh, destroy the dispenser by accident? Um, did we or, world edit over it? Yeah, exactly. That's something that happens, you know? Like, what if I want to change the coordinate of something? I don't have to move the dispenser. I can just go and I can change the coordinates in here. So, like, having all of your logic in a text file that you can just move around and share with people, it's very portable. They can make changes to it. You can run it on test servers very easy um, and not have to worry about all of the, the state of the world in the Minecraft world. I'm, I'm, I'm big on removing things from the state of the Minecraft world as much as you can, and instead having everything abstracted away as text files that live on your server, because it gives you a lot um, more options and a lot more flexibility on, on how everything works. OK, so in ShowScript, um, you can do things like um, you might want to make your shows a little bit more reusable. So for example, you can imagine writing a show, uh, let's call it set day dot groovy and it's very simple all it's going to do is time set day so if i go on here and i do time set day the time has been set today uh well actually whoops uh what i meant to do is show start set day uh and so that is that is set the time today um but uh you know what if we wanted to and then you might want to have another one that sets it tonight right so you might do set night dot groovy and that will just run the time set night command. And so now we can do show start set night. Um, but of course, if you run, if you're just going to run the command, the time set command, there's all sorts of different things you can give it. Um, and so wouldn't it be cooler if we could make one show to uh, have it be configurable, which of these um, things we're going to be putting into it? And you can do that. So let's just make a set time show. And to be clear, like obviously in the case of setting time, it's very, very simple because you could just run the command. But oftentimes, you know, when you're making a theme park, there might be some more complex actions that take a lot of that take a lot of commands to set up properly and execute on um, and things. And that's when this really becomes powerful. I'm just showing setting time as a as a simple example. Um, so instead of doing that, we can do a set time command um, that takes in an argument. 
And this essentially turns our show into an argument, into a, into a function. Um, so our show now takes an argument of time of day. And on tick zero, it's going to run time set, whatever we give it for time of day. So if I do, and, and the way that we do that is we do show start set time. And we can do args, and then we can put whatever we want in there. So let's do day. Hey, look at that. Now it's daytime. What if we do night? Now it's nighttime. What if we did 5 p.m.? That works also. Uh, what if we did, you know, sunset? There you go. Uh, so that's pretty powerful and gives you the idea. And, and you can imagine doing this with more complicated things than just setting the time. Um, uh, to make this pretty powerful and do a bunch of, of different things. Um, and likewise, we can call that show in here. So let's say at the beginning of our wishes show right here, we want to set the time tonight. Um, we can do show, and then we can do name uh, is uh, set time, and then we can do... Uh, Time equals night. I think that works. Did I do that right? Is that right, guys? Uh, I don't think it actually matters what the argument is called here, time of day. Let's call it the same thing. Um, so it's time of day. So if we go into test right here, uh, time of day equals, and let's just make it midnight. And so now in our show over here, if we do show start um, uh, test, the first thing that happens is we set the midnight, and now the rest of our show will happen, and we can be be sure that the blue fairy is going to do her shtick at night. Um, and I missed the firework wherever wherever that went, uh, but that is um, that's essentially you know one way that you can make these shows more reusable um, and use the args flag to. Uh, to kind of make your shows into functions. And your shows can have more than one argument also. Um, so this is showing off a show that is an adder. Uh, it's essentially going to add two numbers together. Uh, so let's go back to our code space. Let's make new file adder.groovy. Um, so what we're doing is this is going to take two arguments, num1, num2, and it's going to broadcast summing them together. So if we do show start, uh, adder args one two. So the way that you do multiple arguments is you put the first one, you do a comma, and then you do the second one. Um, if these were strings, I would put them in quotes like this. This is a string, um, but these are just numbers, so they don't need to be in quotes like that. So let's do one and two, and guess what? The answer is three. I don't think I've given you all any big mathematical revelations, but there you go. Uh, one no plus two. way. One plus two is three. Uh, but it's cool that you can do math like this, right? It's cool that you can do programming. So you can um, you can do whatever kind of, of 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 math and computation that you need to do to decide what's going to happen in your show. Um, and uh, we kind of touched on variables already. Um, so you can define a variable with def um, a variable name, and then you can assign a value to it for later. Um, so you can, you know, do, do my cool variables five. You can have approximately pi is 3.1415. You could have is Ryan cool equal to true um, or false. Like it's up to you, I suppose, whether you want to make that true or false. Um, and what's cool about that is you can um, define variables and assign them wherever you want. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is an example of a practical application of, of how we might um, use show script three on MC Parks to save a lot of time. So we, who's ridden a ride on MC Parks that has um, uh, maps in item frames that animate? Anybody, anybody seen one of those before? One man stream Maybe. or something, yeah. Yeah, you know, they're they're around. Um, so we have an in-house command called image map animate um, that takes an uh, uh, arguments for where an image map is in the game and then takes an, a URL for where to find the image um, for it. And we have a convention where we'll, um, we'll name the frames, um, you know, 001.png, 002.png, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's really annoying because the entire command to make that happen is 
all of this slash 001.png oh, and then 002.png. Um, but instead, what if you could abstract that part away and then just do image mount animate slash 001? That makes it a lot simpler. You don't have to type all of that all the time. And there's a way that you can make this even better with programming also. Um, so if we go into the programming section, I want to show you this, because this is really cool. Um, and actually, I'm going to run this on my test server because I think it's that cool. Uh, so stand by, going to my test server. Oh, no, I don't think Broken is banned from this one. Uh, oh, Bro. hey, look. <laughs> I, I'm where I was when I finished um, filming the, the party Disney. games uh, demo. So that's neat. Uh, but let me do this real quick. Um, GMC. Let's, let's build a little image map real quick. I don't actually know how big this image map is. It's not bigger than that. Uh, so let's do item frame. All right, and now let's do this. Let's do image map. Uh, L1.png. Um, OK, so I have my map right here. OK, so there is our file, um, but we want to animate this, right? And so what I could do is I could do image map animate 002.png. That's, um, oh, wait, no, that's the wrong uh, coordinates. What's the coordinates uh, of this? Sorry, I don't like do like things in Minecraft very often like this. So like, there's definitely easier ways to just check what the coordinates of the block are. I could probably just look at it. Does Minecraft do that? I don't know. Uh, but it's 248, 63, negative 24. OK, so I can do uh, 248, 63, uh, negative 24. Let's copy that real quick because I need to get rid of that. Let's clear my selection. Uh, let's place another. Uh, item frame. Let's uh, paste that in. So I can do image map animate that. To, and you can see it's slightly changed. Um, oh, I do need to replace, I think, the whole thing. Hold on. Oh, because, yeah, hold on, hold on. All right, so clumsy, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay, so that's the second frame. So we have frame one, we have frame two, we have frame three, we have frame four, and you get the idea. So there's a lot of frames there. Um, in fact, there's 42 of them. But, um, and I could do this. I could write a show that does this and then has 01, 02, 03, 04, 05 down and down and down. And that is what we did for a very long time for doing these image map animate shows. I think Broken, correct me if I'm wrong, you you usually use chat GPT to generate the entire show. Um, so you didn't have to, you know, you didn't have to do it yourself and you would just make it so all of these commands uh, were in there. Um, but with show script three, we can do this instead. So I'm gonna copy this and you are not gonna be able to see what I'm doing right now. I'm expecting, if only there was an easier way. There is. Uh, yes, there is indeed an easier way. Uh, so I'm going onto my test server right now to just insert this show real quick. Um, so bear with me. Shows, shows. Uh, we want to create a new file. Let's call it whatever, animate.groovy. And I can do this. Let's paste that in. What were my coordinates? 248, 63, negative 24. 248, 63, negative 24. Okay, so I've put this in. And now, if in Minecraft I do show start uh, animate, Look at that, guys. The show is running 
on its own. No, it's, it's animating by hand, too. Uh, but that's the entirety of the show. And all I had to do was write that one little bit of um, that one little for loop. And this all happens automatically. Uh, really, really powerful. Um, Broken, how, how much time does this save you generally in debugging? And then how, how much easier is it to look at something like this? And if you add another frame, just change the for loop. How much easier is that than generating another show, putting it on top of it? It saves a lot of time, right? And it's much nicer to look at. Um, it's, something, it's something that's quite nice. And I think um, you know, it, it allows us to do a lot of, of really, really neat stuff. And there's some more crazy stuff uh, that you can do as well. Um, so you can share data between shows. Uh, by setting global variables in your shows and then um, calling them in other shows. Uh, you can export data. So let's say that, um, for example, we have our, um, our image map. Say I had a bunch of different shows that I wanted to use that same image map. Um, you could define a variable that has information about where a location is. You can export it, and then other shows can load the show in and take variables from your from that show and then use them in their scripts. So in this case, we are um, uh, we are defining a main location where things are happening in location data dot groovy, and we're exporting it um, and we're calling it main location. And then in another show, we can use the location data. Um, you can load the location data show. And then you can define a variable that grabs the main location out of there. And then I can use all those coordinates in my commands. Um, so that's cool. So you can write functions that are reusable and everything. And it gives you a lot of, it gives you a lot of opportunities for reusing stuff. I definitely recommend uh, reading through this if you're more interested in some of that more advanced usage. Um, now you can also uh, just get stuff um, in, in the in the Minecraft world too. So you can uh, remember I told you about the set time command. Imagine that you didn't have a you didn't have essentials installed, or you didn't you know you didn't have a, a command for for setting the time of the server. Bad example because in vanilla Minecraft that's a thing. But let's just say that you didn't. Um, what you can do is um, you can make use of oh, I went to the wrong server again. Uh, you can make use of, um, of, of some spigot constructs, like Minecraft server constructs, to get the world and then get the time there. So this, this show tells you what time it is. It tells you if it's nighttime or daytime. Um, so let's do that, and uh, let's call it uh, what time is it dot groovy. Okay, and so what's happening here? We are defining a new variable called time where we're getting the world called world, and then we're running dot get time on it. Um, the, way, the reason that I know that uh, get time is a thing is because um, in what world string name is going to return is an object of type world. This is starting to get a little bit more complicated and use a little bit more programming kind of knowledge, but it's really cool. And if you learn, get your head around this, like you actually will have some real programming knowledge that you can parlay into other, um, other applications. Um, so it returns this thing called world, which is from the, uh, the Minecraft server API. And you can do all kinds of things with that. You can create an explosion. You can get the blocks at certain locations. Uh, but what we want to do is run get time, uh, which gets the in-game time of this world. Um, and so uh, what, what we do with that is we check if it's over 12,000. Because if it's over 12,000, it's nighttime. If it's not over 12,000, it's, it's daytime. Um, so if we run uh, show start, what time is it? It's daytime. Um, this is a good time to mention that if you press tab, um, you can tab through all of your shows, um, which is very nice. Um, all right, so let's um, so it's daytime. But now, if we did uh, you know show start set night, oh, it's set night with a capital N. And if we run, what time is it again? Now it's nighttime. Now this is cool because it allows us in the game to on MC Parks to 
have alternate versions of things run, whether it's daytime and nighttime. This is something that a lot of newer rides that have like screen based media, um, they'll have different things that happen, uh, different like, you know, screens that will play um, if it's daytime or if it's nighttime. A great example of that is Rise of the Resistance, actually, in the ITS, um, you know, when you're going up to uh, to space, um, the video that plays outside has uh, it's nighttime on Batu if it's nighttime in real life, and it's daytime if it's daytime in real life. And so this now we have the ability to check the Minecraft server time and run different effects based on that, um, which is great. And time is just one thing you can check. You can check literally anything. Um, you can operate on worlds and players and locations. Um, you can get a list of online players. You can get a list of running shows. So you can check and see if a show is currently running and do things based on that. Um, you just check like, hey, is the show called this running? And if that's true, then you can do certain things. Um, I have some convenience methods for doing sine, cosine, and tangent. Very useful if you're doing um, some sort of teleportation around circles and things. Um, and this is really crazy. I'm just going to mention this. We're not going to we're not going to look at this too crazy, um, because. Uh, but yeah, whatever. If, if you're a programmer, this might be cool to you. Um, we're just running in the JVM, and so we can access literally any class. Um, so we can import things from, in this case, train carts, which is the plugin that we use to control all of our actual ride systems and everything. Um, and we can just like do things like find all of the trains on the server and do things with those. Um, it's really neat. It's really powerful. It's also really scary um, because what this means is uh, anybody who has access to the show's directory um, and who has the cast member command on your server essentially can run arbitrary code on your computer. Um, so you have to be very, very careful with that. Um, and you have to be very, uh, you know, if you're if you're giving other people access, you have to know that they essentially have, uh, you know, arbitrary remote code execution um, on your computer. So, you know, make sure you are taking the very the necessary security practices involved with that. Uh, but that's very advanced stuff and not really like, you know, um, super, super crazy. One last thing before we play around with some achievements, uh, which will, will, will probably be a, a shorter um, exercise, um, is I want to tell you about region shows. Um, so region shows are what power the ambient effects that you see all over MC parks. When I say ambient effects, what do I mean? I mean things like, um, I don't know, give me an example of a region show, Darren or Josh. First thing that comes to mind, go. Journey of Water. I'm sure that was an excellent there. example, whatever it was. I can't hear it. <laughs> right. Um, you know what I haven't done? I haven't looked at my uh, task manager to see what's going on. Nothing's even pinned. 55% GPU, 60% memory, 20% CPU. Why can't, why is nothing working? Uh, Josh had Journey of Water. Excellent. Yes, there's, there's commands that run while you're in a region. Um, so in this case, um, in the example that I have here, uh, we have an armor stand that we want to spawn, do a little wave animation, and then um, and then and then uh, despawn when someone leaves the region. So essentially, what happens is um, there are three different shows. There's a setup show, a loop show, and a cleanup show. And when there are zero people in the region, so you, you define a region too. And when there are zero people in the region, nothing's happening. When the first person enters the region, the setup show plays. That'll do any kind of setup things you need to happen, like spawn in your entities, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a loop show that will essentially play on repeat um, as long as there's somebody in the region. And there's a cleanup show that will run when the last person exits the region. Um, so that'll like despawn your entities and things like that. Um, it's also really good for if you want to just not have entities spawned to put server load on or have things that are very server intensive just not be happening when there's nobody around to experience them. You know, um, when a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? You get to decide. You get to decide. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we have a region. Um, Setup is a link to a show for the setup show. Um, and then uh, loop, you see this delay right here. Um, you can optionally set delays um, after a show completes to run the next phase. 
that's good because some commands execute over time already. Show scripts in this really weird state where like we're defining things that happen over time, but Minecraft commands already kind of like asynchronously go off and do something. Um, like for example, a command that animates an armor stand um, is something that that we have a lot. And if we are in this example, this is our this is our setup show. We're just spawning in Wavy Boy. AS save recall is an MC Parks internal command that we use. Um, our loop show runs ASA animate cycle on Wavy Boy. Again, this is a command that we use internally to animate armor stands, and it's doing it over ten ticks. But we're animating it in a cycle, so it does the same animation in reverse. So this command takes twenty ticks to run. And if we didn't have a delay and we were just calling this show on loop, the show is zero ticks long. And so I mean that every single tick, we would be, um, uh, we, we, would be um, we would be starting another copy of the, the animate command. And that would mean that wavy boy would start waving uncontrollably and just going crazy. And so if we instead add this delay, what that means is, um, uh, we wait 20 seconds for that animation to complete, and then we will start it again. Um, and then finally, there's a cleanup show um, where we will run AS kill to kill the Wavy Boy armor stand. That's, again, an internal command. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, that's, that's essentially how, uh, how region shows work. Um, I'm not going to demo it because we're already almost an hour into this. Um, uh, no broken. I, I I can hear them. It just cuts out immediately, like as if there's some kind of like resource allocation problem. But there definitely isn't. Looking at my task manager, everything's fine. So no yeah. clue. <laughs> so I heard ha from Darren, and then it cut off. Who knows? Um, but yeah. Uh, and so that region shows are. Re, uh, they're they're having little private jokes, and I don't know what they're talking about. Uh. And so region shows give you a lot of opportunities to kind of do um, uh, all kinds of crazy, crazy things. Um, and yeah, so all of this is open source. Um, you can access it on GitHub, mcparks slash show script. Uh, if you want to talk about show script, I do have a Discord server that I set up just for show script um, help and support. So you can go on there and you can chat about it. Uh, I'm very, I've been very slow on getting tutorials out. Uh, maybe I'll just post this as the tutorial and be like, go at it. I should have something a little bit more well produced. I would like to do that. As you can imagine, video production bandwidth here at MC Parks has been uh, um, busy stressed. recently. I think Darren said stressed there, maybe. I don't know. Yes. Uh, so, you know, we'll get to a point uh, where we'll, we'll have some, some better... Um, some better documentation and video tutorials for doing all of this. Uh, kind of what I just did, but in a world where I'm not on five hours of sleep after spending several days of not getting very much sleep, getting ready for the expo, and maybe I'll script it so I won't lose my train of thought. We won't have little digressions, um, you know. Uh, but it'll be very cool, and I'll have some better examples. But that's essentially show script. Um, and if you want to be a technician on MC Parks, I recommend playing around with show script, running it on your own Minecraft server, maybe starting it up in a code space like this, um, which I am going to close um, because even though I don't pay for my code spaces uh, because I work at GitHub, we're just going to we're just going to kill that. Um, and so that is uh, you know that's um, that's show script. I recommend I recommend checking it out. Uh, yeah, if you want to be a technician, play around with it, see what you can do, go into the show script discord, ask questions. I will definitely answer your questions um, as I can. Um, and, uh, you know, you can use that to um, to kind of aid in your application to MC Park. So we definitely would love to to have you um, on our team if any of this is interesting to you. Um, if you sat here for this whole hour, chances are you are in the target demographic for becoming a technician. And if you think any of this is even a little bit cool, um, you should you should definitely uh, should definitely consider it. Um, all right. Next up, I want to talk about achievables. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a little bit more abstract because the achievables repository on its own right now doesn't do anything. It's just like a Java library. I have to hook up a bunch of things to make it usable. Um, so instead for this part point of the of the um, 
of the talk. We are just going to go into a code editor. We are going to um, write, we're going to come up with some uh, funny little achievements right here in our chat. Um, and we're going to, we're going to write them. Uh, so this is the prototypical achievement that I show to anybody who wants to see how achievements work. It's called Magic Kingdom Mountaineer. Um, and essentially, you have some metadata information about it, but the real meat of how it works is in this part. There is a state, there's activators, there's deactivators, and then there's events. So let's start by talking about the state. This is the initial state of the achievements. Um, as you can see, for Magic Kingdom Mountaineer, we're trying to ride the three mountains of Magic Kingdom without warping or teleporting. And so um, by default, riding Space, Big Thunder, and Splash are all false, and we also haven't warped or teleported yet. We're starting nice and fresh. And the goal is to make whatever's in this activators block end up evaluating to true. Now, if this looks scary, it's really not. Um, so let me kind of walk you through it. What we're looking for is if state.roadspacemountain is equal to true, and this is just like saying this and this both need to be true for the whole thing to be true, state.splashmountain is equal to true, and state.roadbigthundermountain is equal to true, then we have completed the Magic Kingdom Mountaineer achievement. There's also deactivators. So if state that warped or teleported is true, that means we have been disqualified from this achievement. And that means that we should set our state back to the default and we gotta start all over again. Now, how do we get from our initial state to the activation state? We do that through events. And so in the case of this one, we care about, these are events that exist on MC Parks. Uh, let's see, can I show you all of the achieve all of the events that MC Parks has in a way in a, a very quick way. Okay, so um, these are all of the classes in MC Parks. These are all the events on MC Parks, actually. So if we look at event um, library event. Uh, so here are all of the player events. And what I actually just want to do is parks event. Okay, so these are all of the events. Um, and so we have everything. We have um, achievable complete event, achievable progression event, achievable complete achievement complete event, admin chat event, uh, audio connect event, audio disconnect event, uh, uh, player eat food event. We have party open event. We have a daily challenge complete event. I'm just scrolling around for random ones at this point so you guys can see what I mean. Uh, vanish event, wishing well donate event. Uh, player title set event, player toggle fly event, uh, hotel create, hotel room create event, uh, findable create event, you know, uh, you know, there's all sorts of things here. The daily reset event when that happens. So there's all kinds of events that can happen and our achievements can listen to any of them. And it's very easy for us to make new ones whenever we need to also. Um, and so that's what we put in, um, we're going to close all these things we don't need anymore. Um, that's, that's what we put in these on blocks in our events. And this is how we transition the state from the initial state to the activation state. So when we complete a ride, we want the complete ride event happens. Let's go take a look at the complete ride events documentation here. And so there are a few different things in here. We can get the player who completed a ride. Um, and we can also uh, get the ride ID. We can get the location where they were when they completed the ride. We can also get a list of the UUIDs of all of the players who are riding the ride with them. They're group riders. Um, and so um, because of all of that, all we care about for this is what ride it is. You'll notice that I don't actually reference the player anywhere here. That's because by default when the achievements are running, like I do the thinking about which player it is for you, which is nice. Um, and so here, uh, when we complete a ride, what we care is, um, is it Splash Mountain, is it Space Mountain, or is it Big Thunder Mountain? So we can check if ride ID is 32, that's Space Mountain, so we set Road Space Mountain to true. If ride ID is 7, that's Big Thunder Mountain, so I'll set we Road Big Thunder Mountain to true. If it's 9, that's Splash, so we set that to true. And every single time one of these events happens, we run this activator script again, and we check, hey, is this true yet? And if it is, then you get the achievement. And if it isn't, then you, know, you haven't gotten it yet. Um, but then we also need to listen for the disqualifications, whether you teleported or whether you warped. And so we put those in here too, so we can check state warped, and we make it so state.warped or teleported is equal to true. Um, because in addition, 
before we run this to see if you've completed it, we actually run this to check, hey, are you disqualified? And if you are disqualified, your state gets set back to the beginning and you got to try again. And so that's, that's essentially what an achievement looks like. Um, uh, what's written here is just basically what I just said. Um, and that's how we, um, that's how we write achievements. Uh, pretty, it's pretty much that. Um, so let's, let's, let's write some achievements. I'm here in Disneyland. Um, and, uh, let's see, let's, let, let think of, think of an achievement we can write, uh, with just, with just Disneyland. Um, somebody give me a good, give me a good suggestion in the chat. We'll, we'll make one, we'll make one based on your suggestions. I'll show the list of events again, so if, if that will inspire people. Uh, here are, here are all the events. Um, uh, with the group rider's ID, could you theoretically create an accomplishment uh, for riding a ride with one of the cast members who worked on the ride? Yes, that is something that is totally doable. In fact, let's write that right now, um, just for fun. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be the little demo that we write right here. Um, Josh, we're going to pretend that you worked on um, uh, the Main Street Trolley, if that's I, okay with I you. I did. I did work oh. on the Main Street Trolley. <laughs> there you go. Wonderful. Um, so we're gonna go write this achievement. So I'm gonna open up my uh, directory. We, do we we see this this window, right? This VS Code yeah. window. Okay, sweet. Um, before before we do that, um, uh, uh, we also have a question: Is this the same thing as dailies? It's very similar to dailies. So dailies use the achievable system. They don't specifically use this language. They use a slightly different thing to write them in Java instead. Uh, this is a groovy uh, domain specific language similar to ShowScript that we wrote. Um, but uh yeah so whatever um it is very similar to dailies the achievable system also powers our daily challenges um so let us uh let's do that okay so i'm just gonna put it in the debug um directory right now and we're gonna call it um uh whatever ride with cm dot groovy um What's fun is since I have a GitHub Copilot, I can do things like a ride an attraction with a cast member who worked on it. Um, so first we need a nice snappy name for it, ride with a cast member. We can do better than that. Um, I don't know, let's call it keys to the kingdom. Uh, ride attraction with a cast member who worked on it. Uh, Copilot wants me to give the icon I earned spade 92. Let's do it. Why not? Uh, reward money 20. Go to? Let's give it that much. I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, and I'm going to give it, I'm going to give myself 2 million park points for completing it. Um, and then, uh, uh, tag easy. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, okay. So, uh, state, let's see. Uh, what do we need for our state? We need, um, and let's actually make this easy. Let's do ride uh, the main street trolley. Um, so let's see. Uh, worked on main street, worked on trolley is equal to, and we need to be a list of people who worked on it. So in my case, we're just going to make it Josh. So W2, D5, W8. I want this to be a UUID, so we're gonna go. Um, oh, I have to. I have to stand by. I have a little auto hotkey script that lets me turn uh, Minecraft names into UUIDs. I just need to restart it because I restarted my computer. Hold on. So if I run this, okay, that's Josh's UUID. Uh, oh, this is open source. This is open source too, by the way. Uh, GitHub.com slash Ryan Act. Uh, if you look for uh, auto hotkey, no. Nope. If you search for Minecraft uh, repositories, yeah, Minecraft username to auto hotkey. Uh, you you can get these too. It's very simple. Uh, when I whenever I do Windows key U, um, any text that I have selected will be parsed as a Minecraft username and replace it with the player's UUID. And Windows key N does that in reverse. Very useful when you're me and you're like looking up people's things in the database very quickly. You don't want to do joins and you want to just very quickly get a player as a UUID. Man, Love I just this. go to name MC. 
Well, yeah, That's but this is so much easier than this. this is, no, or this is it's so much, much easier, easier than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you have auto hotkey, uh, grab this. Very, very helpful. Um, uh, anyway, um, so worked on trolley, and so Josh worked on the trolley. And if there were more people, you know, you could imagine um, we would put them in there too. Who's someone else who worked on the trolley, Josh? Anyone else? Oh, I don't remember at this point. Okay, well, let's just pretend like it's just you then. Uh, and then let's see. Uh, road with cast member equals false. So by default, we have not ridden with a cast member. Um, and activators is when we have indeed ridden with a cast member. Um, so let's do complete ride event. This is wrong. Hold on. So let's do if state dot ride ID is equal to um, what is the Disneyland trolley? Whenever I don't know these, I go to mcparks.us slash attractions. I search for trolley, and we're doing uh, Town Square to Sleeping Beauty. So it's 2.03. Uh, uh, for a second, I thought this was a picture of Magic Kingdom's Main Street, and I was going to yell at you, Josh, but it isn't. You're in the clear this time. Look, those uh, pictures need to be updated anyway. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do uh, state if state.writeid equals 2.03, uh, we're going to do four. Um, group riders in uh, event dot get group riders. So that's a list of UUID, and so we're going to say if um, state dot worked on trolley contains so if this list contains uh uh for group writer contains group writer dot two string because we want to turn that uid of the player uh oh my my smoke alarm's going on oh Daniel's, that's not good danielle's downstairs cooking um this is wonderful <laughs> what a great time the good news is that Discord voice activity is um, well. This is the second live stream that I've done in the past month Ooh. or two, where smoke alarms have been involved. I'm gonna have to remember in the YouTube video to go back and edit this section out. Please do, please do. <laughs> All right, we're back. Wow, I know nobody left. <laughs> That's nuts. Oh, uh, it's, it's my stalling. That's the thing. Um. There is a technical question about how often the events are checked. I assume it's like instant. Instantaneously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this is just like like their event listeners kind of. So like when when the event happens, all that all that goes on. Um anyway. Okay. Um uh, are there any rides that currently open the server that you show script three? Uh probably. Like we've just been integrating it into all sorts of things. So like it's it's being used like all over the place now. Um yeah, there's a lot of good demos of it in um, in the expo hall, though. Um, essentially, like everything in the expo hall is made using ShowScript three. Uh, okay, uh, so where were we? We're writing our achievement here. Uh, so if state dot worked on trolley dot contains group rider dot two string. Um, so we're looping through all of our group riders. We're checking if they are in the worked on trolley thing. Um, state dot road with cast member equals trip. I think that's it. Um, I think at least let's just find out. Uh, so we're gonna. So the way that these achievements are stored is they're just in a Git repository. So I can uh, commit um, keys to the kingdom. Ride a ride with cast member who worked on it. Git push. Okay. So now on the server, I can do um, a c h poll. Uh, whoops, that's not a command anymore. They say admin poll. I forget that I changed it. Um, all right. Oh, ride with CM. Uh, cannot cast object null with class null to class int. Um, okay. Who the hell is Phineas Flynn? I feel like it's probably broken. I also That is so scary. I don't like that. Oh my gosh, I hate that. I don't like that. Get him away from me. Oh, I don't like that skin. <laughs> no, thank you. 
And now it's going off again. Yikes, guys. Stand by again. We're back. We're back again. <laughs> the air fryer is being used at too high of a temperature with smoky things in it. That's what's that's what's going on downstairs. Okay. Um, if anybody, if anybody is wondering, uh, you know what? There might be a bug where I need to restart uh, the server in order for uh, in order for this to work properly. Oh, there that, we go again. Off again. Oh. Well, guys, you know what? I'm very silly. I forgot syntax version zero. That tells Groovy what uh, version of the syntax um, it's meant to be. Because theoretically, I can support having multiple versions of our of our thing, and I just haven't um, gotten around to. Uh, I didn't put a check in for that, so we're getting a generic error message instead of a good error message because of that. Uh, so I, I turn my automatic scene switcher off. Hold on. So now we can go between this and the editor. Okay, so this this was the problem all along. Uh, where is my... I'm the problem, it's me. Why can't I see my oh, cursor? <laughs> there you go, okay. Uh, okay, so we have this. We're back to the original intent of the achievement, but now we have syntax version zero. Uh, all right, uh, add syntax version. Um, the reason why I have the syntax version thing in the first place is so I can support multiple uh, versions of this language that we call Big Al. Um, uh, and so we don't need to worry about, um, we don't need to worry about uh, updating things when I, uh, when I change things. So now if we do that, um, sweet. Okay, uh, ride with CM worked. Hey, Josh. Oh, hi. Let's see, let's see if it works. Are you gonna? Okay, sure. All right. Uh, are we boring the people? Somehow we've gained people. I think okay. we had like thirty-eight at one point. Now we have forty. All I right. think words got around about the smoke alarm situation, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what's coming for the chaos. Wonderful. It does. It does smell faintly of uh, burned potatoes up here. I don't actually know what uh, is being cooked downstairs, but um, it smells pretty good. I've only eaten a protein shake today, so we're gonna finish this up, and I'm gonna go eat something. Ah, Ryan's not coming to the Imagineer panel, I guess. Oh, when's the Imagineer panel? Is that three? Yeah, it's in like half an hour. Oh, man. Uh, oh, boy. I want to go to the Imagineer panel. I might have to skip it. All right, so we're going to ride the, the trolley. Um, this is when we sanity check ourselves and make sure that like everything works. Um, let's see. Let's go to our achievements. Let's search for uh, keys. Keys to the, oh, it turns out that Iron Spade colon whatever is the Triceratops spin logo, by the way. Why would it select that one? It well, knows Dino knows? Land is done for, and it's like, please use know. this one. I don't know. Um, uh, don't mind us for going through shop signs that are floating in the air. They all hot, hot dogs, dogs, even. They're all yeah. hot dogs. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and, you know, we're going, we're going down Main Street here. I hope this works. If this doesn't work, uh... I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. If it doesn't work, we might just we might just like pretend like it worked and move on. <laughs> I think I should just leave to demonstrate why writing an achievement that relies on one specific user is a bad idea. Because if that one user doesn't cooperate, <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. Uh, what do we think in chat? Is this gonna work or no? Absolutely not. You don't think so? I don't know. Does for, anything for ever writer... work on the first time? For group rider in event get group riders state up worked on trolley contains. Well, we're about to hit it. Oh, okay. Hey, it okay. Worked. It worked. Ride the Main Street trolley with the cast member who worked on it. I got two million park points, and apparently I had a daily challenge to ride three rides. Um, so See, that's a thing. Uh, apparently, I did not get that one. I can't ride it with myself. <laughs> um, well, you want to know why, Josh? Because you aren't included in the group riders list for yourself. Yeah, because the way the group, the, the way the group writers, um, the way the group writers achievement, uh, the way the group writers work is it, it's everyone else who you're in the ride vehicle with, and it doesn't include yourself. I feel as though this is highly unfair that I have 155 park points and you now have two million. Look, I'm sorry, Josh. Would you would you like an achievement for uh, logging in while being Josh? <laughs> Hold on. 
Hold That's on. hilarious. All right, this one's called Be Josh. Dot Groovy. And uh, so we're gonna have achievement uh, name uh, the ninth wonder of the world. That's not uh, what's a what's a joke about a Canadian. Uh, Let's see what ChatGPT wants, uh, or what uh, GitHub Copilot wants. Josh is Canadian. Think of a funny name for the achievement. The Great White North, that's what we're going with. Fine. Uh, ride Canada far and wide at Epcot. No. Be Josh. You get Iron Spade 19, Josh. What might that be? I don't know. And what do you want? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> You want two million park points? Obviously. All right. Does not forget syntax version. Um, I also <laughs> want to write a, a VS Code plugin uh, to get like syntax highlighting and everything, and so also it can yell at me for like completing for missing syntax version and things like that. Um, uh, so let's see. State is Josh. Activators state dot is Josh. Uh, events user event no. Let's do uh, player. Session start event. Uh, and we're going to say if event dot player equals, and this one is a string, so w2d5w8 is Josh true. All right, first try, guys. Ready? You guys ready for first try? Okay, and loaded. Hey, Josh, lo lo log in. Did you get it? It's loading. Oh, I got it. It didn't do the big sound effect, but you know. But you, yeah, it's because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, got, you got the teacups as your logo, by the way. Fantastic. All right, so there you go. Uh, so that's what, that's what it's like to write achievements. Um, you know, uh, we have lots of options for writing achievements. It's pretty easy, too. Um, there's definitely some error checking and things to add to make things a little bit easier. Uh, and also, something else that I really, really, really want to do is I want to add the notion of, um, of modules. Magic Kingdom Mountaineer, it's very verbose, right? What I'd really like to do is for the entire achievement to actually just be this. Activators, complete ride one, complete ride two, complete ride three. And deactivators is just warping or teleporting. This is ideally what the syntax would be, is it's nice and flexible and allows us to um, uh, make it so we only need to write the what it is to complete a ride bit once and then reuse it all over the place. Big fan of modularity, big chan uh, fan of extensibility and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we need, we need this to make things more reusable and make it e harder to make mistakes. Um, and then we also need a cool... Uh, developer experience. Ideally, there's something very similar to show script where there's a code space that you can just launch um, and you get a place to... This one won't have a Minecraft server attached to it, but instead will... Um, instead, it will allow you to have a little console application where you can fire off dummy events um, and uh, and like and, and, and do everything in, uh, in console and, and see everything happening. Um, oh, I entered Tomorrowland. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, those are achievements. Uh, the language, by the way, I didn't even mention this during the presentation, but the, I'm calling the language to write achievements, Big Al, which stands for Big Al's Integrated Groovy Achievement Language. Um, so stay tuned for more information about, um, how you can, um, uh, about how you can uh, start writing in Big Al. Uh, you can start writing in ShowScript today. We're looking forward to extending both of these. We're looking forward to uh, adding new features. We're looking forward to doing everything. Thank you for being here for this very crazy, chaotic presentation. I hope you learned something. Did you guys learn things? Did anybody learn something cool? Did and and also, are you inspired? Is anybody inspired? Does anybody want to want to want to learn to do stuff? All right, sweet. Then I, I did my job. Uh, so <laughs> thanks for being here, folks. Enjoy the rest of the expo. Uh, quick roundup for the rest of the panels. Today we have the Imagineering panel at three o'clock. 
we have Welcome to Batu, the Galaxy's Edge panel. Uh, Darren, you want to tell him anything about what's going to be there or no? I don't I even think, know if he's at his computer. I, I think um, Darren on the server said BRB like 20 minutes ago, so I don't know if he's around. Okay, well, there you go. The Galaxy's Edge panel. It's going to be really cool. You're going to see you things that you haven't seen up, before. If you, you're going to want to show up at the beginning if you can. Ooh, okay. Um, and then if you want to hear more about what it's like to be a GR in MC Parks and all the awesome work that the GRs do to keep the community wholesome and, um, and safe for all of our guests, the GR guest relations panels at 7 o'clock. And finally at 9 p.m. tonight, MC Parks history panel. We will, we will um, dish all. And by dish all, I mean we'll tell some fun little anecdotes from the past 11 years of server history. Hey guys, I just realized something nuts. The next expo that we do is going to be 10 years of MC Parks Expos. Oh no. I don't like that. <laughs> the MC Parks Expo still seems like a new idea to me. Do we still have that map? The original expo map? Can we reuse it? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, all right. Well, thanks for coming, guys. Enjoy the rest of the expo. And... Yeah. <laughs> this panel is adjourned. Thank you very much for coming down. Bye.